Coal ash is the combustion waste that's left after they burn the coal and it's got a lot of heavy metals in it. Uh, arsenic is one that's really problematic. They're finding a lot of arsenic uh, concentrations coming off the coal sites and where they've they've stacked the stuff up. Um, uh, cyanide, mercury, lead, and they they process the coal with 66 some different chemicals. I've seen a list of it. It's got things like toluene, benzene, chlorine solvents, and none of that's removed before they burn the coal. So you have a lot of those residues in it. So when you're looking at um, issues of using it in our case generationally in the same area um, without it being regulated it's we have no idea how bad this is. Coal ash waste is the byproduct of using scrubber technology to reduce air emissions from coal-fired power plants. The coal ash and sludge waste that are left can contain toxic metals including arsenic, lead, boron, and sulfates. According to a 2010 report by Earth Justice and Environmental Integrity Project, U.S. coal burning power plants generate nearly 140 million tons of toxic coal ash each year. Fifteen of the 44 United States Environmental Protection Agency's high hazard sites for coal ash are in the Ohio River Valley. There are two types of coal ash disposal. Dry ash is stored in landfills and often travels on conveyor belts that are miles long. When it's windy, dry ash can blow off of these belts and from the landfills. This can cause breathing problems and other health effects for area residents. Wet ash is stored in wet ponds. In Ohio, most of these wet ponds are located near the Ohio River and are not accessible to the general public. From the air, these ponds may look like harmless, serene, rural lakes. But what can't be seen are the toxic coal ash contaminants they contain. Five million people get their drinking water from the Ohio River. This water could be contaminated if the ponds leak or the man-made dams break. American Electric Power owns several landfills and wet ponds to dispose of waste from their Gavin Power Plant. Ohio is one of 29 states that does not require coal ash waste ponds and landfills to be monitored. The US EPA has proposed two competing sets of rules to begin regulating coal ash. The proposals are very different. One proposal known as Subtitle C is favored by most citizens and environmental groups. It classifies coal ash as a hazardous waste requires operating permits, and contains minimum standards that are federally enforceable. The other proposal, known as Subtitle D, is favored by industry. It categorizes coal ash as non-hazardous, provides guidelines that are not enforceable, sets no minimum federal standards, and only addresses coal ash disposal. The storage of the coal ash is, is a huge issue because a part of it is stored in landfills, in some cases unlined, and you're talking about liquid waste, scrubber sludge, things like that in impoundments that are put between uh, strip mined hillsides that are unstable and the only thing holding that back between the storage site and the community in, in so many cases they're not lined and it's just mud, rock, debris, you know, from the, from the, from the strip mining, which is prone to erosion and seepage. I would like to see the EPA do what our tax dollars are paying them to do, which is protect our health and our environment. And the only way I see that working is if we have regulation on both the landfills and the beneficial use at industry's expense, not the taxpayers. This is a critical time on the coal ash issue. We are currently in the comment period. It ends uh, September 20th. Citizens need to make comments to the US EPA and also attend uh, one of the seven hearings being held throughout the country. This affects all of us. It doesn't just affect the people who live next to the coal ash ponds or the coal ash landfills. Because of the beneficial reuse of this toxic waste, it, it can affect all of us and our families. This toxic waste is used in anything from cosmetics to bowling balls to gypsum board and many, many other products that we use as consumers.
It's really critically important for citizens to tell the US EPA exactly what you think should be done about regulating coal ash in this country. But I think some of the things that it's really important for people to put into their comments is that it's got this wide gaping hole when it comes to beneficial use and it won't matter how stringently we regulate those ponds and landfills if they don't put it in ponds and landfills. So it's really important for people to say yes we want C but we also want to get regulation wrapped around beneficial use because it's not beneficial to our communities. Public hearings will be held in Arlington, Virginia, Denver, Colorado, Dallas, Texas, Charlotte, North Carolina, Chicago, Illinois, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Louisville, Kentucky. The US EPA has announced a comment period extension through November 19, 2010. Citizens should urge the US EPA to enact the strongest possible coal ash regulations.